Hey guys, welcome back to the show and thank you so much for tuning in today. We are going to be talking about feminism's blatant misandry. For a while now, I feel like progressivism has tried to paint itself as the antidote to bigotry. So progressives have been telling people, hey, you don't like racism, you don't like sexism, you don't like xenophobia. Good news, I have the answers. But as time has gone on and as progressives have gained more control and as things like critical theory have fully developed, I think it's now painfully clear that progressivism, at least in its current form, doesn't really seek to eradicate prejudice, it merely seeks to replace existing prejudices with new ones. And as someone who would rather there just be no prejudice at all, at least not based on things like immutable characteristics, which people cannot control, that's one of the reasons why progressivism has never appealed to me. For example, let's talk about anti-racism. Traditionally, anti-racism would probably be associated with things like colorblindness or individualism or essentially any concept that tried to reinforce the fact that no, people are not mainly defined by their skin color and no, people of the same race are not a monolith. But now, thanks to progressivism, anti-racism is no longer about trying to further egalitarianism, it's actually about trying to get white people to admit that they have innate privilege and racism just baked into their skin color. And I think the reason why that shift happened, changing the focus from equality to just voicing grievances, is because social justice as a system, like any other justice system, is necessarily punitive. In a criminal justice system, for justice to be achieved, the people who have committed crimes need to be punished for them. And similarly, progressives have decided that for social justice to be achieved, for society to move forward, the, the groups who have committed these social wrongs, likewise, need to be punished. That's why we see all of this anti-whiteness going on, because social justice demands that somebody needs to be punished for society's wrongs, and because progressives are also racial collectivists who are incapable of seeing individuals as just that individuals. You must be a part of some larger group for their brains to wrap around the situation. So yeah, that's pretty much why we see progressives trying to punish white people for things they had nothing to do with, and why there's just so much resentment against white people among the progressive movement. We recently did an episode responding to a video from The Cut and really just exposing the explicit white hatred that so many on the far left have. And if you haven't seen that episode yet, I recommend you check it out. But as we all know, the progressive worldview isn't just focused on race. No, we have intersecting identities we need to talk about. And of course, gender factors into things too. And like with race, the progressive stance on gender is no longer about trying to find equality. It's no longer about trying to achieve equal opportunities for men and women. No, no. It's about replacing anti-female biases with anti-male biases. And nothing has made this more clear to me lately than this recent article from The Independent. It's basically a puff piece promoting the new book I Hate Men by French author Pauline Armange. And I mean, really, They've just taken off the mask at this point. But before we get into it, I do want to give a quick thank you to our sponsor, Patriot Penguin. So are you sick and tired of overpriced greeting cards that don't even say what you actually want them to say? For years, Americans have been stuck in the greeting card section reading sappy, incoherent messages that are, frankly, weak. They're no fun to give and they're certainly no fun to receive. But those days are over thanks to Patriot Penguin, the first and only greeting card company for conservatives with a bigly sense of humor. From birthdays to Christmas, Patriot Penguin has a wide selection of cards that will trigger your snowflake friends and relatives, plus remind the like-minded that, hey, you haven't drunk the mainstream Kool-Aid. All their cards are designed and printed right in the good old US of A, and they ship free and quick, which you gotta love. Go to PatriotPenguin.com right now and save on a four card for $22 deal with the offer code Lauren. Remember, you must place your order by December 15th to guarantee arrival before Christmas. Let's keep Christmas great with Patriot Penguin. Again, go to PatriotPenguin.com. That is PatriotPenguin.com with the offer code Lauren to make sure that they know our show sent you and to get some amazing greeting cards for the holiday season. So this article starts off by discussing how even just this book's title, which again is I Hate Men, ruffled some feathers in France when it was first published. Imagine that. Some people out there don't like blanket declarations of sexism. Huh, 
Wonder what their problem is. As The Independent writes, on the 31st of August 2020, Mediapart, an independent investigative website, reported that Ralph Zimmerle, an advisor to the country's Minister for Gender Equality, had emailed the publishing house ordering it to withdraw the book. Moi les hommes je les déteste, which translates to I hate men, he argued, was an incitement to hatred based on gender, a criminal offense in France. His claims were based on the book's title and summary on the publisher's website rather than its contents. If you've seen this show before, you should hopefully be aware of the fact that I do not believe hate speech is a thing, and certainly not a thing that should be deemed worthy of a criminal offense. I think you should absolutely be allowed to publish a book called I Hate Men, just like you should be allowed to publish a book called I Hate Women. So I have to say, I really, really disagree with France on this matter, but no surprise there, a European country doesn't take freedom of speech seriously, must be Monday. However, I do have to say that I am glad that if this rule has to exist for some reason in France, that at the very least, it appears it is being enforced equally. Because I think there are a lot of people out there who might say they're in favor of hate speech and they don't want incitement of hatred toward any group. However, they would gladly look the other way if the group that's having hatred incited toward them is either men or white people or any group seen as one of the predominant controlling groups of Western society. So yeah, I hate this law, and I think the fact that France even has a ministry for gender equality is stupid, but hey, at least this one guy seems to be doing his job properly. The article continues, I hate men, a feminist examination of the dislike of men was flying off the digital shelves. As a nonprofit run by two people, Monstergraph struggled to keep up. Within days, the original edition of I Hate Men was out of print. Monstergraph then passed the torch to a larger publishing house. Publishers outside of France have also started paying attention. Attention. By the time Armand and I speak, the author adds, I Hate Men is set to be translated into 16 languages. Again, I am for free speech. I am not in favor of deplatforming. And if all of these publishers out there think that there is a market for this book, which there clearly is, then I think they should be free to publish it and make that money. However, I do want to point out yet another double standard here. Recently, we did an episode talking about how employees of Penguin in Canada were so outraged that Penguin would dare to publish Jordan B. Peterson, a, a best-selling author and credited academic, that they they actually had a town hall where they some cried and other employees went to news outlets to voice their frustration. Essentially, it kind of seems like in the publishing world, it is now more controversial to publish Jordan Peterson, a self-help book by Jordan Peterson, than it is to publish a book just called I Hate Men, which is so disappointing and so representative of how crazy the times we're living in are. It just... I honestly have no words. The piece then says, the book that changed Ramange's life is short. The English version totals 78 pages, and she says, very personal. It's a treatise drawing from her own experiences to make wider observations about male domination. Each chapter focuses on a specific theme, such as sisterhood, misogyny, and the trappings of straight relationships. Ramange defines misandry, the essay's central theme, as a feeling many women experience, even if they don't dare admit it, which consists in thinking that men in general aren't people people you can automatically trust. You don't get to say that the West is male-dominated while simultaneously getting press attention for your probably soon-to-be bestseller book, Hating on Men. Like, do you see how those two concepts seem to be in conflict with each other? This is similar to how people complain that Trump is a fascist dictator on Twitter without realizing that if he were, in fact, a fascist dictator, they probably wouldn't be able to say such mean things about him on Twitter. If you actually want to know who's in control of a civilization, you've got to look at who you're not allowed to criticize. Clearly, our culture has no problem with women criticizing men, but what do you think would happen if a male author were to publish a book called I Hate Women? I doubt he would be getting flattering interviews with The Independent. We want to think that we're all nice people, but structurally, men as a group aren't nice to women as a group, Armand continues. So it makes sense to be wary of them, to not want to be especially close to them, and to ask them to make a lot of effort before we accept them into our lives. Defining misandry as a dislike of men isn't inaccurate, but it is reductive. The dislike Armand speaks of isn't personal or mean or contrary to Zermeli's claims, an incitement to hatred. 
It's an acknowledgement of structural sexism and of those who take positive actions to limit its impact. Once again here, collectivism rears its ugly head. It seems that progressives such as this author are incapable of seeing individuals as just that, individuals, and as interactions between individuals as merely anecdotes and the results of two distinct personalities coming together. No, no, for these people, any interaction between two people is actually representative of the broader interactions of those two groups. We see so often how anytime a man is critical of or mean to a woman, feminists love to label it sexism, even if the interaction wasn't necessarily based on either person's gender. This author saying that women shouldn't trust men because men as a group aren't nice to women as a group is no different than a misogynist saying that as a group, men shouldn't trust women with their credit cards because women as a group are financially irresponsible. Both of those statements are sexist and I think both of those statements deserve to be condemned by our society, not celebrated. As Armand puts it in her book, I hate men. By default, I have very little respect for any of them, which is funny actually because ostensibly, I don't have any legitimacy when it comes to hating men. I chose to marry one after all. Okay, honestly, that right there surprised me, but good for her, I guess. Kind of feel sorry for her husband, but moving on. And I have to admit that I'm still very fond of him. That doesn't, however, stop me from wondering why men are as they are. They're violent, selfish, lazy, and cowardly. It doesn't stop me from wondering why we women are supposed to graciously accept their flaws, even though men beat, rape, and murder us. Something that collectivists on both the right and the left actually really do not understand is that racial groups genders, uh, people of the same sexual orientation, they don't really act together, right? Men as a whole do not do anything to women as a whole because uh, men and women are individuals. Some men rape some women, but as, as a woman, I myself, thank goodness, have never been raped and the men in my life have never raped anybody. You can't hold people responsible for things they haven't done. I, I feel like that shouldn't be controversial to say, but I mean, when you think of it, a lot of progressivism is based on exactly that. And also just in general, listen to the disdain she has for men. She calls them violent, selfish, lazy, and cowardly. If you needed more proof that feminism was not the answer to sexism, I point you to this article. This is not someone who wants to help men or just be equal to men. The title, I think, says it all. She hates men, why? Because she honestly believes that they, as an entire gender, beat, rape, and murder women as an entire gender. And this next part of the article is where things get really good. It says the backlash against Armand has played out both privately in her DMs and publicly in some of the media coverage. She currently gets three to four messages a day, far fewer than she did in September, right after I Hate Men first came out in France. Attacks range from low-level jabs at her physical appearance to attempts to engage with the thesis of her book without actually reading it. The irony being, of course, that every insult, every malevolent jab helps prove her point. There is violence and misogyny. It's indissociable from it, she says. Misandry, on the other hand, is just a defensive posture to preserve yourself. This is exactly like the meme out there where it shows that woman shoveling literal crap over a wall, and then when people shovel it back, she goes, oh no, the internet, how could they do this? Like, I I'm not for harassing anybody. I'm not for insults based on appearance. Well, it depends what the person did. Sometimes... Sometimes it's the best retort, but in general, I want people to play nice online, but this person, this author, she herself is not playing nice online. I would so, so rather someone insult me based on my appearance than call me uh, violent, selfish, lazy, and cowardly and accuse me of being a rapist. And that is exactly what she has done with this book to an entire gender. I I'm sorry if this person is getting any actual harassment or death threats, but as far as like mean comments go, in my opinion, she she is just receiving exactly what she has put out. And before we get to this article's stunning conclusion, I want, no, no, I need to tell you all about Tommy John. This year has been pretty uncomfortable, pretty much everywhere, but as long as you're wearing Tommy John underwear, there'll be one place you can count on being comfortable, 
in your pants. So you can shop their extended Cyber Monday sale right now and give the gift of comfort to every single person on your list and yourself with Tommy John men's and women's loungewear. Say goodbye to old stained sweatpants. Tommy John loungewear is luxuriously soft and guaranteed to fit perfectly with the same level of comfort and innovation that goes into every single thing that Tommy John makes. Plus, Tommy John's loungewear, pajamas, and underwear come in limited edition sets, perfect for gifting, but they sell out quick. Liam and I both own both Tommy John underwear and lounge sets and they are some of the most comfortable things that I own period anytime I do the laundry the stuff that gets worn first is the Tommy John stuff their lounge pants especially I have been obsessed with I've been living in them Tommy John's customer favorite hammock pouch underwear by the way also puts a permanent end to sticking and chafing <laughs> it's back in stock so order now last time they sold out in six days so get your order in soon there's no risk with Tommy John their best pair you'll ever wear or its free guarantee keeps you protected and you can shop Tommy John's extended Cyber Monday sale now to make your gifts arrive by the holidays. Go to TommyJohn.com slash Lauren for 20% off site wide. Again, that's TommyJohn.com slash Lauren. Happy shopping. So this article finishes off by saying at its heart, Armage's book is a call to liberation. Her writing is full of hope, unwavering in its trust of other women and their abilities. If we all became a Sandris, what a fabulous hue and cry we could raise. We'd realize, though it might be a bit sad at first, that we don't actually need men, she writes in the book's rousing introduction. I believe, too, we might liberate an unsuspected power, that of being able to soar far above the male gaze and the dictates of men to discover at last who we really are. All right, I want to be super clear for this part. I believe women need men, and I believe men need women. I'm of the old-fashioned belief that actually the sexes are complementary and societies, families, everything works out best when we work together and embrace our differences, right? I've always said that men and women should be playing for the same team, and that's exactly what I experience every single day in my personal life. I look around myself, I, I look at my brother, at my father, at my amazing fiance and producer, and I cannot imagine my life without men, and I think anyone who is trying to advocate essentially that a another gender is useless or has no place in your life, they're an extremist, a hate-filled one as well. And it pains me, it really makes me sad how popular Amange's message is apparently is because I think it speaks to the fact that a lot of women out there have unfortunately taken the blue pill. That's pretty much all I have to say for now though. And as always, I would love to hear what you think. Why exactly is it that Jordan Peterson is more controversial than a book literally called I Hate Men and how do you think we can go about fixing this? Let me know, but that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.